It is, it is a, uh, it's such a delight. I, I will get the apologies out of the way at this point and say I'm, in September I'll celebrate my 55th year with the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And somewhere along the way, I've gotten older. But I've been uh, listening for the Lord, especially this past week. If it weren't he who has done this, I would say he has robbed me of a lot of sleep. But how can you say that about him? It's been a wonderful time of waiting on the Lord, and uh, I'm looking forward to what he has to say to us. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. There you go. I'm going to stand up for a minute if that's okay. <clears throat> the title of my sharing with you tonight <laughs> has a, a strange word in it. And as I heard this a week or so ago, I felt like I knew what the word meant. But I said, Lord, I don't think anyone else will know. And so, being the wise gentleman that I am, I went right to the top and I called Brother Kenneth and later on Brother Stan. <laughs> and to my dismay, they didn't want me to take the word away. So, so here it comes and we'll take a minute and talk about this so we'll, God willing we'll all understand it and get something from him tonight for each of us. The title of our message is The Ministry of the Holy Spirit is communicable. That's the word, communicable. Communicable. Now, Eric just looked away and said, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> just teasing. I had to look it up in the dictionary to be sure, Rose, and what the dictionary said was, is able to be transmitted from one person to another. Like if there is a bad flu bug that's going around, you know, we might say, stay away or wear something or do something because it's what? It's communicable. It can be passed from one to the other. Such is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I've asked my wife Elaine to read a few of the verses as we go along. There's not a lot of them. I actually have two points of this message, so I'll watch the clock and we'll all be good. I'd like us to share this truth that as regards the communicability, I got it out, it's good, of the Holy Spirit. We see this in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. Here's an example of it from Luke chapter 8, verses 43 and 46. Elaine? And a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately her hemorrhage was stopped. And Jesus said, Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Well, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that power had gone out of me. I love these couple of verses because it, uh, it is apparently so that he was surprised that someone had touched him with faith. Peter was, like the others, saying, what do you mean someone touched you? We're in a mob scene here. We can't help but be touched. And Jesus, in effect, said, someone touched me so as to draw life out of me. Now, what that says to me is something I love to think about, and I'm challenged to think about it for us. There is a measure, a deposit, of the Holy Spirit who is in you that is not for you. I love to think about this. We're not called to defend ourselves. That which goes on around us. 
Thankfully, we have one of the Jehovah names of God who says, I'm the one who fights your battles for you. I'm your defense. You and I don't need defense with all that would come against us. But what we do need to do is to protect. Now, the difference is defense is like this. Eric takes some good karate courses and needs someone to practice on. So he says, Don, can I have you over the house? We're going to try a couple things. And, uh, <laughs> gee, I'm tied up. Could we do that another time? The idea is a defense of, of yourself is something that is horizontal. We don't have to do that. Doesn't mean you won't be attacked. But God, your defender, will take care of that. What we do have to do is we have to protect what is between we and the King of Glory. Think about that as we go through life's challenges. Both types of challenges are designed to pull you away from him. Whether it's attacks of people around you who don't understand or attacks of the enemy to cause us and encourage us to be careless with the connection from above. Okay, Jesus, can you hear me okay? Is it okay? Good. Jesus defended himself with the Lord God. And here is this case where they're going from one place to the other on mission. And this lady apparently comes up from beside them under the law, not legally. And she had what is required when there is a communication of the Spirit of God. And that is she had a measure of faith. It always shows up in someone who's about to receive. And, and she had, I don't know where she got it. I don't think we can tell. But she had concluded, if I risk touching others, I must get to the hem of his garment because if I touch that hem, I'll be well. I'll be whole. I don't know where she got it, but I'm sure glad she got it and brought it to him. And he was able to cause, actually, she was able to cause that measure of the anointing to go from him to her need. I love it. Okay, so we see it in the life of Jesus in so many places. We also see it in his servant leaders. I'm going to put some of you brothers and sisters on the spot here for a minute. Elaine, would you read James chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, please? Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. So here's our thought continuing that there is a deposit in the church as well as in the Lord Jesus. There's a deposit in him, in them, that is for others. I want so much to encourage the leadership of our church family, so much to encourage you. It's worth the price of protecting the anointing. Some days it may seem like a hard story because the truth is you're protecting something that is not going to serve you. It's going to serve others. And look at how James absolutely, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he was completely convinced that if the elders would call, be called for, they'd be ready to pray. One of the times in our church services that I love the most is when Pastor Don will invite folks to come and for the leadership of the church to come and pray with them. There's so much that God can do with that reality of being transmissible by the Holy Spirit. 
James talks a lot about it. And Paul in 1 Timothy 4 says a lot more about what can be transmitted. Listen carefully. You're on. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through a prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them, so that your progress will be evident to all. I love those couple of verses. Paul to the young Timothy. Don't neglect what you received, how? By the laying on of hands of the church leaders and by the prophetic word. I mentioned the coming up on my 55th anniversary. There have been a very small number of occasions over those years way back in the early 70s a, a brother came to us we were living in a little town called Laconia New Hampshire we had just begun a new church at the time called New Christian Fellowship and a brother showed up on a Sunday morning whom we did not know and he had been referred to us, and we had been and encouraged to let him share, have him share. The brother's name was Franz Schotty. He was from Holland. No one there knew him, nor did he know any of us. And he shared, and to this day, I'm sorry to say this, I can't remember any of what he said during the message. I can't remember. But after the service, he said, brothers, could I pray for your elders. And so there was a group probably of three or four of us at the time. And we went into the back room and he prayed and ministered, communicated. And he came to me and paused a moment and said something like this. I can quote him pretty closely. He said, brother, I see you around a study table with many books and you're studying. And he paused a moment and he said, my son, I set you as a teacher in the body of Christ. And he went on to say in the context of that, beware and be careful of the noises that will continue to surround you and pressure you to not fulfill what I've called you to be and to do. And brother, brother Shoddy left about a half hour later. We never saw him again. But he was carrying something. He was carrying something that was not for him. I want to encourage each of you, each of you, who are in a place of responsibility in this church. You're carrying something. Therefore, you're called to protect something that is for those whom he has called you to serve. Oh, dear. All right. That's my first point. The Holy Spirit deposits a measure of his life in us with which he intends to serve others. My second and last point. Sometimes the ministry of the Holy Spirit requires physical contact, and sometimes it doesn't. It's interesting. Elaine, could I get you to read from Luke 7, please? When he had completed all his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. And a centurion slave, who was highly regarded by him, was sick and about to die. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jew Jewish leaders asking him to come and save the life of his slave. Now Jesus started on the way with them. And when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. For this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him and turned and said to the crowd that was following him, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. 
When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Here he is carrying something, and this man who had been granted a measure of faith approached him and said, would you, would, would you come and my slave is ill? Would you come? If you address him that need, he'll be well. And then he went on to say, I'm not worthy to, be in, to, to have you in my house. Wow. I love the measure of faith that's in him here. And so here's a case where sometimes the ministry of the Holy Spirit does not require physical contact. This is how we can pray for folks on a prayer list or pray for folks who are outside of the sanctuary. Absolutely very important, very critical, and very much a biblical part of our experience. We don't always have to have someone that we can touch or be touched, better said. All right, now, <laughs> this will be this may be our last scripture reading. I love this. I love this. If it's true that sometimes it's not necessary to have contact, sometimes it is. Communicability is a mystery to me, but I've had that number of occasions over the years where an opportunity to pray in a situation, it was recognizable that something was being given from one believer to another person. And it came through what Paul refers to in Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. Elaine, please. Paul's writing at the church at Rome from Corinth, and he, he writes, For I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you, that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you while among you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. There's, there's so much to look at here. Paul is, is writing the letter to the Romans. He is actually writing, as far as we know, from Corinth. Am I okay, Stan? He's going like this. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go like this. Just, yeah, it's okay. And he is having a wonderful opportunity to spread the gospel in Corinth. But he says, I long to be with you. Why? That I may, I love this word, that I may impart some spiritual gift to you. Amen. My, I hate to say experience, I'm not sure there's a better word. My conviction, there you go, that's a better word. My conviction in the matter is that imparting of spiritual gifts very often comes through physical laying on of hands. Not always. Let the Lord be the Lord here. There's something about laying on of hands goes all the way back in th through the Old Testament and the Mosaic Covenant and much of the ceremony therein that became the reality of this wonderful truth, the communicability of the Holy Spirit. I want so much to encourage, I said this, I have to say it a second time, our leaders in this church. Sometimes when you come forward for prayer, the Lord will point someone out to you. And he'll say, son, I've got something that I want to give to that person, whatever it might be. Other times you'll come and present yourself to be a vessel of service and you won't see anything. But what often happens is those who are coming will have a measure of faith to receive what the Lord has spoken. Yeah. It both and are, they're both legitimate, absolutely um, important, not the right word. They are the way faith operates. And that is faith will come sometimes to the recipient and sometimes to the one who's giving. 
I love. I have to pick one word out of this last text from Romans one eleven. Thank you for keeping that up there. Where the word is that I may impart. Ah, I love this word. The Greek word. I'm no Greek scholar, but I can look up in a good in a linear to see what it says. The Greek word that we see as impart here is the same word which we translate as give. Give. And it's interesting to me, oh dear, Elaine, this will be my only rabbit trail, I hope. Just, you know, she said, don't go on rabbit tails, trails. Well, I have to go here for just a minute. <laughs> Tim, you may have to take that mic away from her. <laughs> but there is a spiritual gift of giving. Yeah? And I think sometimes we underestimate what that is. I'm not at all contrary to the giving of resources. Absolutely not. But I, if, if the word giving and imparting is the same word, it's the same substance of reality, I think there is a spiritual gift of imparting other spiritual gifts. The gift of giving. It goes beyond the material. Can you, can you see that? Stan, are we okay with this? <laughs> I've seen in, from time to time, not necessarily so-and-so is called to have this gift of giving or this gift of impartation. But there'll be times when God will say, okay, Tim, sorry to pick on you, your front row. Oh, dear. You don't have to have operating in your life what God can use you to impart to another brother or sister. You don't have to be a prophet to impart the gift of prophecy to another person. Wow. I love that. That helps me to not worry about everything that I'm not. I remember a number of years ago, I, was, I got in a bad habit of talking to people and saying to them what I wasn't. I am not an evangelist. I am not an evangelist, which I'm not. <laughs> Can we erase that? <laughs> and one day I felt like the Lord, Lord whispered in my ear, Don, stop talking about what you're not because I'm not through with you yet. Now, Bert, that doesn't mean I'm waiting around to become an evangelist, no, or a prophet or any of those other things. But what I'm saying is let the Lord continue to use you in that deposit realm the way it pleases him. The capacity that you have to serve, all right, here, listen now. The capacity that you have to serve is not limited by who you are. It's only limited by the one who dwells in you, who has no limits. Oh, dear. I love that. And so Paul says, I'm wishing I could be with you to put hands on you, to prophesy, if you will, to speak forth, to impart, if you will give me back the word, to communicate giftings of the Spirit of God. And he says, he goes on to say, two things are going to happen. You're going to be encouraged, and so am I. Wow. That's good. About, I want to tell you a little story about the moving of the Spirit of God, if I may, the communicability of the Spirit of God. I believe it was about four years ago, I was sitting in a hospital room in um, Manchester, New Hampshire, thank you, and <laughs> I required gallbladder surgery, and I also required removal of a large kidney stone. I'm sorry to be so earthy about all this, but that's what it was. And in the midst of that, I developed a terrible blockage of my stomach and intestines. And one of the doctors came in, he said, we don't normally deal with three different things at once, but we can't deal with those other two until we do something with this. And so I, sorry, 
I had this tube put down my throat. If you ever have not had that done, don't do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm lying there not able to eat or drink or wondering where we go from here, this side of pretty major surgery. Two of our brothers came in from the church, both elders, one an elder pastor. I knew them both intimately for many years. They came in to see me. And I was glad to have them there. And they talked a while. And they said, well, before we go, we want to pray with you. I said, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm lying down. And they got up. And they started to move toward me. And I, I've never heard, I say this because it's the truth. I've never heard the Lord audibly. But there are times when I've heard him and I know what he just said to me. And he spoke four words as the brothers have gotten up and they're moving toward the end of my bed. He spoke four words to me. Here's the words. These, speaking about them, these are sent hands. Wow. Now, to this moment, I don't know what they might have heard as far as how they were to pray. But I stopped them. Hold on a minute. Their names were Percy and Ed. And I said, before you pray, let me tell you what I just heard. And I related that to them. I said, now, before you pray, I want to pray. And it was a very simple, halting, sincere prayer. I said, Father, I receive my two brothers and specifically their hands upon me as if these are the hands of Jesus. Ah. They prayed. We said farewell and see you later. At that point, I was looking at the possibility of surgery before the surgeries. Within, it was somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes, everything in my insides just started to function properly. Wow. The next morning, I had the two surgeries together, and that evening, I went home. It was wonderful. Those brothers came. I know the two men. I know how they live. Perfect? No. Protective of what God has called them to? Yes. And, and once in that situation, the Lord could have spoken to them and said these same four words. He said, Don, let me tell you what the Father has just said to us about our hands here. Why he spoke to speak to me and not them, I don't know. But the word of God brings faith. What is the scripture says? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Quick little Greek word lesson there. The, that word worth, or excuse me, word, is the word rhema, which is the, primarily the spoken word. I'm so thankful for it and for those brothers and for that provision. One more story. Oh, Elaine. I think you're going to. We don't have much time left, but I want to know, you've been talking a lot about laying on the hands of the presbytery and the leaders, but what about the rest of us here? Is there appropriate time or appropriateness for us to lay hands on others? Here's my answer. First part of it's a bit of a smart, smart aleck, but here it is. Some of you older folks would remember the debate between uh, Mr. Ray Reagan, Ronald Reagan, and Jimmy Carter when they were both vying for the presidency. And they were having a debate, and Brother Carter, Mr. Carter, whom I love as a brother, kind of went on and on about some things. And... Do you remember this, Stan? And Mr. Reagan, at the right, he had a great sense of humor. At the right moment in that debate, he said, Jimmy, there you go again. 
I said to Elaine, I happened to watch that. I said, the, the race for president was over right then and there. It was, it was done. So here you, there you go again, Elaine. That's why I wanted to share that story. <laughs> but it's a good question. How about the rest of us? And uh, boy, I have 35 seconds to answer you. <laughs> Thank you. Tim, you shut that off. We're going to get out of here on time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I believe there is ministry of the Holy Spirit that is most typically served among and by and through constituted leadership. I also believe from Mark 16 that there's a whole lot else of the power of God to be released in all of us. And so I think I would like to close with this, if I may, from reading from, this is not in the text here. Thank you, brothers, for not being concerned about it. We're in over in Mark 16, and you don't have the mic in it. This is good. And Jesus says to them, Go into the, all of the world. Now, this is all of us. Now, this is the church. Go into all the word, world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. He who has disbelieved shall be condemned. And here you go, church family, church at large. These signs will accompany those who have believed. Are you ready to look at what you need to protect? Here it comes. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. They will drink any deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And so then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. And here's our verse to take with us for the evening, Mark 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. We're all called to know him in the supernatural realm. In these gatherings when there is an opportunity for communicability of the spirit and the power of God, I sure do covet more and more of that among us. But I also covet the church family being released into the very needy community. With what? With that which is communicable from you, which he has deposited for them. Wow. Timothy, would you please come and close our service? Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you. Thank you.